Number one says match the directed line segment with the image of polygon P being transformed to Q. So that's meaning that P is the first and Q is the second. So when we're taking a look at these, it's going to be kind of nice on the screen here because I'm going to be able to just pick it up and um, move it so we can see. Um, but so here is um, A is this V vector. So the shape is going to move and I would pick a dot somewhere. Okay, I kind of like the one that's already labeled P and Q. So you are going to pick one from the original and then a corresponding one to the image. And then you should see the shape move like that. So we can see that this first translation actually moves by vector U. So I'm just going to next to this number one, write A. And then I'm going to cross off A. Um, so then vector W looks like this. So then we can kind of move over here and see which one moves like that. So P, here's where Q would be. So translation 2 does not do that. Um, P to Q, so definitely not for translation 3. Translation 4, P maps to Q. That would be good. So translation number four is um, vector W, which goes with B. Um, C is vector A that goes this way. So we can go ahead and check that out for our last two. So here's, remember P is mapping to Q. So I'm gonna set it on P first. That definitely doesn't map to Q. P mapping to Q does in translation three. So translation three is letter C, which leaves D for translation two. Um, and we can certainly take a look at it and see to make sure that we're right. So put this on P, does map to Q, so we're good. Number two, draw the image of quadrilateral ABCD when translated by this directed line segment V. Label the image as a maps to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime, and D to D prime. So now again, I'm going to be able to just kind of draw this and move it. You could do this on tracing paper if you wanted to, or you need to come up with a strategy um, of how you're going to make sure you're moving the same amount. So one way you could do that is by kind of looking, you're going to go up, you're going to go on the diagonal two, and then one. So each time you're going to go on the diagonal two and then one, that's the movement. So if you wanted to be counting like that, you certainly could. Um, whatever strategy you can come up with to make sure that you get it to the correct spot. All right, so then A is going to map to A prime. So A prime is going to go here. B is going to map to B prime, which is going to be here. C to C prime, and then D to D prime. So then I'm just going to um, connect these here and then label them. So here would be our new quadrilateral. And remember, the quadrilateral should stay congruent to the original one. So the image should be the same size as the original one. Nothing should look like it really changed, just the position of it. Whoops. All right, so here was A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Number three, which statement is true about a translation? So translation takes a line, um, to a parallel line or to itself. So let's take a look at a line here and think about if we did a translation. So if we translate this line, that just means we're gonna move it, something like this, okay? It's just gonna slide around. So definitely appears to be taking it parallel or kind of to the same line. So A sounds good, um, but let's look at the rest of them just to make sure. A translation takes a line to a perpendicular line, so definitely doesn't do that. 
a translation requires a center of translation. That's not true, just movement. A translation requires a line of translation. That is not true, so A is the correct answer. Number four, select all the points that stay in the same location after being reflected across line L. So remember, if we're reflecting across a line, okay, the points are going to be reflected to the other side of the line, the same distance. So we're going to want something that's a distance of zero so that it stays because A will map over to here, B will map over to here, D will map over, C and E will stay in the exact same spot since they are on the line of reflection. Lines L and M are perpendicular. A point Q um, has this property, rotating Q 100. So we're trying to figure out where Q is. So we're looking for point Q. Um, rotating Q 180 degrees using P as the center has the same effect as reflecting Q over line M. So here's the line that we could reflect over. It's going to have the same um, effect as reflecting over this line or rotating 180 degrees. So picking a couple possible locations, we looked at this in, in the practice problems from the previous lesson. If we put a point here and reflect it, it's going to end here but rotating 180 would end it down here. So putting something in kind of this quadrant here is not gonna work. So let's look at down here. So if we put it here and we reflect, it's gonna go this way. And then a 180 degree rotation is gonna send it here. So that's not gonna have the same effect. So our point P, give two possible locations, is gonna be on this line L. Okay, so Q could be here, and I'm just going to call it Q1, because if we reflect it, it'll end up here, and if we rotate it 180, it'll end up there. So there's one spot, um, and here's another spot it could be. Well, and really, I mean, that's fine. I could also put it on the other side, so it doesn't have to be on this left side. I could put Q, the second possibility for Q to be over here. Um, and then do all points in the plane have this property? And that would be no, because I showed you a couple examples. Okay, so only points that are on line L. Number six, there's a sequence of rigid transformations, meaning that everything stays the same size, um, that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. The same sequence takes D to D prime. Draw and label point D prime. So we see that D is on segment BC. So we know D prime is going to be on segment um, B prime, C prime. So we know, oops, let me get those arrows out of there. So we know D is on this segment. So D prime is also going to be on the image of that segment. D is um, this distance from B. So it's going to be that distance from B prime as well. So if you had a compass, you could just open your compass to that length so you could actually do the exact measure. But if you're just sketching, okay, making it look about the same distance is good. Number seven, two distinct lines L and M are each perpendicular to the same line N. So let's get this drawn. So let me draw our line N. And then let's draw two other lines that are perpendicular to it. So perpendicular meaning that there's a 90 degree angle here. So perpendicular to that same line N. All right, so this is N and then this is L and M. All right, then let's take a look. So what is the measure of the angle where L meets N. So this angle here is 90 degrees since it said perpendicular. What is the measure of the angle where M and N meet? So M and N meet, they also meet at a 90 degree angle. 